Welcome to On Mac Development, conversations and tutorials on today's latest technology in Mac software, applications, programming, and development. You can access related resources, recommended reading, special offers, and more when you visit the On Mac Development Resource Center at informit.com slash macdevcenter. Hi, I'm Diane Daniel, and I'm here at the Voices That Matter iPhone Developers Conference. And I'm here with Marcus Zara. Marcus, tell us a little about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm an iPhone developer. Before that, I was doing uh, Cocoa development on the desktop. I'm a uh, co-author of the blog, Cocoa's My Girlfriend, which has gained a lot of popularity. And I've co-authored a book for Addison Wesley called Core Animation, uh, along with uh, my co-author, Matt Long. And we also, I also just completed a book for Core Data for the Pragmatic Programmers. A lot. So it's been keeping me busy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a slower winter. So it's been a, it's been a hectic few months. Nice. Um, and you presented at the conference. Yes. Which Pre was that? I uh, presented this morning, and it was a talk on core animation and developing custom user interfaces using core animation. Nice. How did that go? It went fairly well. Uh, the Q and A session was fantastic. The feedback I got from the audience was great. Um, I, I didn't really expect to have that many questions, but they just kept coming, and I was actually able to answer most of them. So it was, it worked out real well. There was a lot of uh, uh, communication going back and forth with the audience. It, I think it was very well received. Good. So it sounds like you're liking the conference. I, I am enjoying the conference. Uh, the there's a lot of new faces here. It's um, first conference I've been to on the East Coast. Uh, for iPhone development, so it's nice to see a lot of people that can't make it over to the West Coast conferences, seeing a lot of uh, new blood coming in, a lot of new developers, and just a lot of excitement. You always get, uh, you always walk away from these kind of charged because everybody, uh, the the energy is infectious. You kind of you get built up and you want to go back and you want to do more code, and um, I'm seeing that a lot of that in the eyes of the other other people that are here. Yeah, it's been pretty loud, the buzz. <laughs> it has been, and I expect it to get bigger throughout the day as people are learning more and more and absorbing more from the conference. They're going to get more and more excited, so I don't think people are going to be out drinking tonight. They're going to be in the rooms coding. Oh, that. wow. I really do. So. <laughs> well, on, on that note, um, what has been your favorite session? Um, my Well, actually, mine was not my favorite session because I, I knew it was in that one. Uh, my favorite session was the one that followed mine. Uh, it was August. He did a talk on UI design, which I thought was really, really good and needed to be said. Um, a lot of the conferences so far to date on the iPhone, because the iPhone's, you know, it's only been a year. Um, we, we tend to forget that, but it's yeah, been just definitely. a year. Um, a lot of them have been focused on the how, and he really focused on the why and the fact that we need to design for our users and not for ourselves. And we really need to focus on really good user interfaces and make those great. And then the app will follow. Um, and he gave some really good pointers on you know, you know, the workflow you should be going to. That when you come up with an idea, don't jump in and start coding. You know, draw it out, put it on paper. You know, answer every question on paper, then code it, and go in that direction. That way, you get a much better user interface out of the end of it, and a much better app. So thinking of how people are actually going to use what you're trying to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, think about the fact that you know you're not using a mouse pointer. You're using your finger. People are going to be using your app for three to five minutes at a time, maximum. Little things like that that we don't think of because we want to write you know the next great spreadsheet app for the <laughs> iPhone. That doesn't really make sense. So. You know, to really think out all those little design elements first before we code. Do you think that's a hard thing for people? For developers, that's very hard. Okay. Because we want to code, we want to write it, we want to make it happen, we want to build things, and you know, taking time to think about them first. Eh, well, you know, we want to figure out the details later and just start coding right away because that's what we enjoy. So it's it is hard to take a step back and take that design and take Apple's advice and take uh, August's advice and you know, draw stuff out, pull out paper, you know, and actually draw things on a piece of paper. That's kind of foreign. So it's something we need to think about a lot more as the platform matures. Um, using either his session or your own experience, what has guided, do you struggle with that issue yourself or do you have little tricks that help to keep you, you know, thinking I need to develop for the user? Uh, well, I have a current lifestyle right now that I only get to, to uh, draw my apps on paper. 
Uh, I'm doing a lot of contract work right now, and I don't get time to actually code on my own applications. Oh, okay. So when I'm sitting somewhere without Wi-Fi is when I actually start sketching on, and designing my own apps. Uh, I've got two apps that have been on the drawing board for a few months. I just unfortunately don't have the opportunity to actually write them yet, but I've got plenty of stuff on paper just because that was the only really only thing I could do so far with them. Um, a lot of times with clients, though, they also want to, you know, they want, they're like, here's an idea, here's a cocktail napkin, go do it. And we have to, I have to just take a step back with them and say, okay, we need to plan this stuff out. And we need to design this now. Because if we don't design it now, we're going to be designing it two days before release. And, we, and kind of forcing them into that model. And it's, it's tough. Because everybody just wants to see it now. Yeah. So everybody just wants to move fast. Yes. Um, well, to switch gears a, a little bit, um, what's different about programming for the iPhone compared to other environments? Um, well, one of the biggest, well, two big, the two biggest items that are their stumbling blocks is one, you have very small amount of memory. Um, where we've gotten used to it in this day and age where you don't care about memory. You've got gigs of it. Don't worry about it. Um, if it's leaking, so what? On the phone, that's a huge deal. Um, not so much, it's gotten better with the 3GS, but uh, before that, it was you had 20 megs of memory max. And 20 megs is not a lot of memory for, for a graphical application. You could blow that away very quickly. So that's been a big stumbling block. Um, and just having to actually really, really pay attention to that has been one of the biggest hurdles I think people are having a problem with. And the other one is just the screen. It's not very big. Um, and being, we're used to being able to have you know gigantic you know 20, 20 inch, 30 inch right. monitors, and here we are with this tiny little screen that's the same size as we were using you know 15 years ago, and having to go back and say okay how, how to best utilize this screen space, and still make it you know beautiful and make it user friendly. That's those are the two biggest hurdles. And how do you approach those hurdles yourself? Well, with the memory one, I just it's uh, Xcode has some nice tools in it now to help uh, analyze the code and catch memory leaks, and just being consciously aware of it and going back and constantly looking for ways to refine that and making it smaller. Um, but on the design side, really is you know, you know follow you know the old rule of what would Apple do. You know, look at Apple's apps and see how they would solve that data display problem and then implement that in your apps. And then if that doesn't work, then go to someone who does design for a living, who does, you know, a graphic artist and have them come up with perhaps a way you haven't thought of because engineers tend to be very, lit you know, literal and linear thinkers. Um, and go to someone who's, got, who's good at abstracts and have them come up with some ideas. Going back to the users, um, you know, there you are trying to think about things on paper and how the user's going to handle that or, or what they need. And then you have these other issues, these stumbling blocks with the memory and the small space. When you approach design, do you think of those in different stages? So you just let yourself think about the users first, don't worry about memory, don't worry about small space? Or are all three of those elements something that you're thinking of from the beginning? The the small space I think of while working with the users and the user design, the memory I tend to worry about later. Okay. Um, it's it's one of those things if you pre-optimize it, you're going to spend all your time doing that. So you, you tend to focus primarily on the user and the user experience. And then once you've got that pretty close, then you start going, okay, now how bad is the memory? How bad is this going to leak? <laughs> and then start figuring out ways to trim that back down. And pull that back into reality. So that makes sense. So unfortunately, the tools let us do it on the desktop. So we can we can code and use up a gig of RAM and go oops and pull yeah, and then pull that back down later. So we get we get to have a little bit of flexibility during development. Thanks for podcasting with us. Remember to visit the On Mac Dev Resource Center, where you can access recommended reading, special offers, and more at informit.com/macdevcenter. Be sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single episode. Brought to you by InformIT, the trusted technology learning source.